Benjamin Banker Benjamin Banker was a free African-American scientist, surveyor, almanac author and farmer. Born in Baltimore County, Maryland, to a free African-American woman and a former slave, Banker had little formal education and was largely self-taught. He is known for being part of a group led by Major Andrew Ellicott that surveyed the borders of the original District of Columbia, the federal capital district of the United States. Barnica's knowledge of astronomy helped him author a commercially successful series of almanacs. He corresponded with Thomas Jefferson, drafter of the United States Declaration of Independence, on the topics of slavery and racial equality. Abolitionists and advocates of racial equality promoted and praised his works. Parks, schools, streets and other tributes have commemorated Barnica throughout the years since he lived. However, Many accounts of his life exaggerate or falsely attribute his works. Early Life Benjamin Barnica was born on November 9, 1731, in Baltimore County, Maryland to his mother Mary, a free black, and his father Robert, a freed slave from Guinea. There are two conflicting accounts of Barnica's family history. Barnica described himself as having only African ancestry. None of Barnica's surviving papers describe a white ancestor or identify the name of his grandmother. However, some biographers contend that Barnica's mother was the child of Molly Welsh, a white indentured servant, and an African slave named Banker. The first published description of Molly Welsh was based on interviews with her descendants that took place after 1836, long after the deaths of both Molly and Benjamin. Molly may have purchased Banker to help establish a farm located near what eventually became Ellicott's Mills, Maryland, west of Baltimore. One biographer has suggested that Banker may have been a member of the Dogon tribe that were reported to have knowledge of astronomy. Molly supposedly freed and married Banker, who may have shared his knowledge of astronomy with her. Although born after Banker's death, Benjamin may have acquired some knowledge of astronomy from Molly. Barnica was named on the deed of his family's 100-acre, 0.40 km2, farm in 1737, when he was six years old. He lived on the farm for nearly all of his life. As a young teenager, Barnica met and befriended Peter Heinrichs, a Quaker who established a school near the Barnica farm. Quakers were leaders in the anti-slavery movement and advocates of racial equality. Heinrichs shared his personal library and provided Barnica with his only classroom instruction. Barnica's formal education ended when he was old enough to help on his family's farm. Notable works In 1753 at the age of 22, Barnica completed a wooden clock that struck on the hour. He appears to have modeled his clock from a borrowed pocket watch by carving each piece to scale. The clock continued to work until Barnica's death. After his father died in 1759, Barnica lived with his mother and sisters. In 1771, the Ellicott family moved to the area and built mills along the Patapsco River. Barnica supplied their workers with food and studied the mills. The Ellicotts were Quakers and shared the same views on racial equality as did many of their faith. George Ellicott lent Benjamin Barnica books and equipment to begin a more formal study of astronomy in 1788. The following year, Barnica sent George his work calculating a solar eclipse. In February 1791, Major Andrew Ellicott, a member of the same family, hired Barnica to assist in the initial survey of the boundaries of the new federal district, which the 1790 Federal Residence Act and later legislation authorized formed from land along the Potomac River that the states of Maryland and Virginia ceded to the federal government of the United States in accordance with the Residence Act, the territory that became the original District of Columbia was a square measuring 10 miles, 16 kilometers, on each side, totaling 100 square miles, 260 kilometers too. Ellicott's team placed boundary stones at every mile point along the borders of the new capital territory. Barnica's duties on the survey consisted primarily of making astronomical observations at Jones Point in Alexandria, Virginia, to ascertain the location of the starting point for the survey. 
he also maintained a clock that he used to relate points on the ground to the positions of stars at specific times. However, at age 59, Barnica left the boundary survey in April 1791 due to illness and difficulties completing the survey. He returned to his home at Ellicott's Mills to work on an ephemeris. Andrew Ellicott continued the survey with his brothers Benjamin and Joseph Ellicott and other assistants through 1791 and 1792. At Ellicott's Mills, Barnica made astronomical calculations that predicted solar and lunar eclipses for inclusion in his ephemeris. He placed the ephemeris and its subsequent revisions in a number of editions in a six-year series of almanacs which were printed and sold in six cities in four states for the years 1792 through 1797, Baltimore, Philadelphia, Wilmington, Delaware, Alexandria, Virginia, Petersburg, Virginia, and Richmond, Virginia. He also kept a series of journals that contained his notebooks for astronomical observations and his diary. The journals, only one of which survived a fire on the day of his funeral, additionally contained a number of mathematical calculations and puzzles. The title page of an edition of Barnica's 1792 Pennsylvania, Delaware, Maryland and Virginia Almanac and Ephemeris stated that the publication contained in addition to the information that its title page described, the almanac contained a tide table for the Chesapeake Bay region. That edition and others listed times for high water or high tide at Cape Charles and Point Lookout, Virginia and Annapolis and Baltimore, Maryland. In his 1793 almanac, Barnica included letters sent between Thomas Jefferson and himself. The title page of a Baltimore edition of his 1795 almanac had a woodcut portrait of him as he may have appeared, but which a writer later concluded was more likely a portrayal of an idealized African-American youth. The almanac's editors prefaced the publications with adulatory references to Barnica and his race. The 1792 and 1793 almanacs contained lengthy commendations that James McHenry, a signer of the United States Constitution and self-described friend of Barnica, had written in 1791. A 1796 edition stated, Supported by Andrew, George and Elias Ellicott and heavily promoted by the Society for the Promotion of the Abolition of Slavery of Maryland and of Pennsylvania, the early editions of the Almanacs achieved commercial success. After these editions were published, William Wilberforce and other prominent abolitionists praised Barnica and his works in the House of Commons of Great Britain. Political views Barnica expressed his views on slavery and racial equality in a letter to Thomas Jefferson and in other documents that he placed within his 1793 almanac. The almanac contained copies of his correspondence with Jefferson, poetry by the African-American poet Phyllis Wheatley and by the English anti-slavery poet William Cooper, and anti-slavery speeches and essays from England and America. Barnica's 1793 almanac also contained a copy of a plan of peace office for the United States that Benjamin Rush had authored. The plan proposed the appointment of a Secretary of Peace, and described the Secretary's powers. The plan stated, Correspondence with Thomas Jefferson On August 19, 1791, after departing the federal capital area, Barnica wrote a letter to Thomas Jefferson, who in 1776 had drafted the United States Declaration of Independence and in 1791 was serving as the United States Secretary of State. Quoting language in the Declaration, the letter expressed a plea for justice for African Americans. To further support this plea, Barnica included within the letter a handwritten manuscript of an almanac for 1792 containing his ephemeris with his astronomical calculations. In the letter, Barnica accused Jefferson of criminally using fraud and violence to oppress his slaves by stating. The letter ended. An English abolitionist, Thomas Day, had earlier written in a 1776 letter. Thomas Jefferson's own actions and statements on slavery and on the treatment of slaves were ambiguous and paradoxical, see, Thomas Jefferson and Slavery. He reportedly instructed overseers at his home at Monticello to not whip his slaves, but the overseers often ignored his wishes during his frequent absences. 
a researcher has found no reliable document that portrays Jefferson in the act of applying physical correction. Without directly responding to Barnica's accusation, Jefferson replied to Barnica's letter in a series of nuanced statements that expressed his interest in the advancement of the equality of America's black population. Jefferson's reply stated, Marie Jean Antoine Nicolas de Caritat, Marquis de Condorcet, to whom Jefferson sent Barnica's almanac, was a noted French mathematician and abolitionist. It appears that the Academy of Sciences itself did not receive the almanac. When writing his letter, Barnica informed Jefferson that his 1791 work with Andrew Ellicott on the District Boundary Survey had affected his work on his 1792 ephemeris and almanac by stating, On the same day that he replied to Barnica, August 30, 1791, Jefferson sent a letter to the Marquis de Condorcet that contained the following paragraph relating to Barnica's race, abilities, almanac and work with Andrew Ellicott. In 1809, Three years after Barnica's death, Jefferson expressed a different opinion of Barnica in a letter to Joel Barlow that criticized a diatribe that a French abolitionist, Henri Grégo, had written in 1808. Death Barnica never married. Because of declining sales, his last almanac was published in 1797. After selling much of his farm to the Ellicotts and others, he died in his log cabin nine years later on October 9, 1806, exactly one month before his 75th birthday. His chronic alcoholism, which worsened as he aged, may have contributed to his death. A commemorative obelisk that the Maryland Bicentennial Commission and the State Commission on Afro-American History and Culture erected in 1977 near his unmarked grave stands in the yard of the Mount Gilboa African Methodist Episcopal Church in Oella, Maryland. See Mount Gilboa Chapel. Mythology and Legacy A substantial mythology exaggerating Benjamin Barnica's accomplishments has developed during the two centuries that have elapsed since he lived. Several such urban legends describe Barnica's alleged activities in the Washington, D.C. area around the time that he assisted Andrew Ellicott in the Federal District Boundary Survey. Others involve his clock his almanacs and his journals. All lack support by historical evidence. Some are contradicted by such evidence. A United States postage stamp and the names of a number of recreational and cultural facilities, schools, streets and other facilities and institutions throughout the United States have commemorated Barnica's documented and mythical accomplishments throughout the years since he lived. 